Um, so, first of all, uh, let's start with you, Vicky. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you fit into the context of this uh, discussion. Um, well, <laughs> I, as the uh, title implied, it's sort of my job description, I am at the call face. Um, I am responsible for the state of cybersecurity here at the Economist Group. Um, and I, you know, I, I do try to share my opinion with those at, at conferences and on boards at, at various organizations. Um, I, think, I think there's a, a misconception that this is a technology problem. And in fact, technology is not enough. If, if we look at uh, technology spend on, on cyber, it's growing year on year, and yet so is cybercrime. Um, and, and that's counterintuitive. If, if spending more on technology was going to solve the problem, it would have done it by now. We need to get a lot smarter about how we're resolving these issues, not just keep throwing the same old solutions at the problem. Would you agree that, that cyber resilience is, is the right language? Is it just about language or is it sort of a mindset? Um, I prefer to think it's about mindset uh, because language isn't going to solve the problem. Mindset will. Um, and and I, to me, what cyber resilience says is that, that people are really understanding that um, a, a security incident is not a case of if, it's when. Um, these are things that are happening all the time. Um, Nick referred to it sort of as, you know, will happen. In fact, these do happen. These happen every day. Um, organizations should be keeping track of how frequently they are actually being attacked. Um, for instance, I've been tracking this at my organization since 2012. Um, in 2012, I was attacked 25 times. In 2016, I was attacked 350 times. Um, th this is not if, this is when, this happens every day. And, and we need to make sure that our risk management programs are in place, that we're looking at you know, who is trying to attack us? What are they trying to get? How are the things that they're trying to get vulnerable? And what are we doing to protect those things? It needs to be very targeted. It's not like defending a castle. It's not about building a great big thick wall that's really high and that'll keep them out. This has to be much more sophisticated. So many organizations focus on making sure the top team know how to respond to an incident. But in this day and age, every single person who works at an organization needs to know how to respond to an incident because you don't know where the attack is going to come from. And it could, and has, in my case, come through the post room. So the post room guys need to know how to respond to an incident. Whoever is in the front line of an attack needs to know. And, and focusing only on a small few is, is going to end in tears. We really need to broaden out who we're training. Do you think that there's a balance to be struck between not moving too fast with your tech advances, uh, advantages at the kind of detriment of your of your potential to be resilient to cyber attacks? I, I think you need to bring both along at the same speed. I, I think that in this day and age, we're all becoming tech companies, no matter what we do. Um, and and you know, the digital transformation is happening whether we like it or not, uh, because if we don't transform, we're going out of business. Um, but along with that, that technology change, there also has to be education and awareness people have to be brought on that technology journey. You, you cannot assume that the technology is going to run the world. I, for one, don't want to live in that world. I mean, I want to live in a world where people run technology. Um, and that means making sure that everybody understands what security is, what it means, how it works, and what their role is. Um, this is not something that is beyond the ken of mere mortals. I mean, everybody can learn about security and should, and organizations need to invest in that learning if they want to be successful in the digital world. You see these cycles where these new technologies or these new concepts kind of you know, become very popular, like social media when that first kind of went 
boom. And then suddenly you've got lots of people coming in, selling their services as experts in the field. But there's 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 a lot of snake oil typically in the in the snake oil salesmen in the early stages of, of you know nascent technology booms. Are we do we need to watch out for snake oil salesmen in the uh, in the field of uh, cyber resilience? Um, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, it's a combination of of snake oil and car salesmen. Um, I guess at the moment, my the biggest bugbear for me are the GDPR experts. How can anybody be a GDPR expert when GDPR hasn't even come into force yet? And nobody actually, even the people who are writing the regulations don't fully know what they're going to be, do they? So anyone who tells you they understand it. <laughs> And it'll be a good 10 years post introduction before we'll have enough case law on the books for anybody to be able to definitively say this is what's likely to happen. Um, but in, in the world of technology, um, in addition to that, um, every single new product that comes out, a salesman calls me and tells me how it's going to solve every single security problem that I have, no matter what it is. And and I've got to believe that perhaps that's not the case, that there is no way that every single one of these tools is going to fix all my problems or none of us would have any problems. And, and really, I mean, it, it's just such a landmine. I mean, I, I started out by saying, you know, technology spend is increasing every single year. And yet that so are the number of incidents. Technology is not the answer to the problems here. People are the answer to the problems. And, and it's people who can choose how they will use technology intelligently to protect their environments. Um, I mean, we were talking about um, skills and, and hiring and so on. And, and I think the, the other thing that comes to play in all of this is too many corporates are afraid to take a chance. We can't hire um, an intern. We can't hire an apprentice because they haven't done it 10 times before. We've got to hire somebody who's been there, done that, got the t-shirt at least six times over just so that we can CYA. Um, and, and we've got to stop thinking that way globally. We've got to start realizing that good old fashioned solid risk management is what's required here. That not every single nail needs a sledgehammer to drive it home. That, that there are solutions, that there are people who we can train to do the jobs that we need doing. I mean, yes, some of them are highly skilled and there is a very, there are a very small number of people who can do those. But we don't need those small number of, number of people to do every single job. It, with GDPR being so up in the air, I mean, it, the, the the impact of the new regulations are, on your business, if you have a breach, has to be part of your resilience planning, right? So how can you incorporate good resilience planning when the, 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 the goalposts are sort of like are still a bit fuzzy and not really set? Is that something that needs people need to get hung up over? Um, if I can start that one. So um, GDPR is a combination of good privacy, and good security. It is not wildly different from what has been needed and has been um, required for the last 10, 15, 20, probably even more years than that. Um, so in terms of, of resilience, response, um, data breach, these are all things that have been a reality for quite some time. Um, we don't need to understand the GDPR to know that we have to have a good response to a cyber attack. And a good response to a cyber attack is no different from a good response to a building burning down or a hurricane that's about to hit. I mean, it's the same principles. And, and we can use those same principles and those same skills to be ready for and to respond to cyber attacks. I think it's it's fair to say, Vicky, still that a lot of people, uh, you know, who who have a deeply technical minds and careers, they tend to lack in some areas that come so kind of like base level communication. It's the language thing again, isn't it? So, um, are you finding that your that your sort of teams are 
are, are growing in that way? Are you offering specific training and, 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 and support for people who, who lack the communication skills but have the, 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 the sort of heavy technical skills? Um, I actually tend to hire the other way around. I hire people who have the communication skills and teach them the technical. So I'm one of those odd geeky techies who can actually talk to people. Um, I have spent my entire career working in IT, um, but I have always been the people side of IT. Um, and I'm the one who has explained to, to people in all walks of organizational life um, how the computers work and how to get the best out of them. Um, so I think you're right. I think absolutely it is critical for those people that are are leading security, that are leading IT today, need to be communicators as well as technologists. Sadly, not all of us are. Um, but there are many more today who are coming out of their shell and learning how to be good communicators. Um, and I think it's up to organizations to realize that, that they have a responsibility to train their technology people how to communicate and how to train and to train their communicators how to do technology. Because I think it has to go both ways. Um, I mean, I would I'd also like to add a couple of items um, to the list that Nick gave. Um, I think the another feature of your security program has to be a good detection regime. Um, somebody has to be responsible for watching and looking for the intruders. If, if you don't have people who are focused on that, it, you're not going to see the early warning signs that somebody it might have received a phishing email or, or have clicked on an spurious link and gone to a bad website. Um, so you really need to focus on that as well. Also, um, compliance and assurance is often forgotten. I mean, people tend to get a control set in place and leave it there and assume, and assume it's just going to work forever. And it doesn't. You have to be watching over the shoulder all the time, checking, checking again, making sure that the controls are operating effectively so that you are going to have a good, solid security regime in place. And um, Well, I think the piece of advice I would give is one that my grandmother gave me many, many years ago, which is don't idly wish it done. Begin it once and do it. You can look at this problem forever and think it looks huge. Pick something and do it.